The words of the Quran given by God through the Prophet Muhammad to Muslims are Islam's core. His will was accomplished by the invention of calligraphy, becoming a direct indirect deriving force of a Muslim's strong identity. As a vehicle for aesthetic energies and symbolic meanings of God's word in the Quran, Muslims understand that a fine school is a religious duty and appropriate for architectural ornamentation. Calligraphy forms and styles should be learned to underline epigraphy as a dominant factor in Islamic ornamentation. Religious inscriptions are placed where any Muslim see learn them by heart, while an amalgam of lettering, texture, color, and inscription embellishes the building. Islamic calligraphy can be considered a geometry of line based on mathematical calculations. Besides, the term spiritual geometry describes both the structure of calligraphy and the essence and spirit of Islamic art. A mystic Sufi believed in God's presence and purpose in his creation exemplifies the iconic form of calligraphy to express God's message. Arabic script were gradually introduced in Indonesia. Of two basic types, Copic was used in words Allah and Muhammad. Calligraphy also applied to Quranic words on sculptures and drawings which depict human beings and, and uh, animals and flora. From the 14th to 16th centuries, calligraphy appeared less like in mosques, but on graves or manuscripts combined with Japanese Arabic letters, Jawi. Arabic kufi script started from the 11th century, introduced by Kambay graves in Gujarat. Other styles, such as Nashki, displayed on stone, glass, wood, and paper in the 18th century when the Middle East or Mughal architecture was establishing. Calligraphy observed in the local Japanese culture and decorated most as a creative artistic expression. Above all, the significance of calligraphy was due to God's word and the message of Islam. This paper discussed how Islamic calligraphy has functioned among Japanese Muslims' identity and their mosques. So my, for 15 minutes, I have talked uh, this uh, as following. Islamic ornament, we have arabesque and geometric calligraphy. And then what is the function, whether symbolism, whether beauty, or both? And then what is related with the Muslim identity? And then particularly calligraphy in certain Japanese mosques and spaces, and finally, I want to show a few examples about the most during the three Islamic periods, transitory, that's colonization, contemporary. Before that, I just want to discuss a little bit about the Islamic ornament. Brand claims the Islamic ornament rarely requires to be read as a symbol. Instead, it stands as an affirming background with hidden symbolism. For Helen Brand, Islamic ornament serves to beautify the structure but can evoke mystical ideas. There's no constant association between particular buildings and the symbolism of this. Ornament as a visual place is often the first of aspect in architecture. This dualism was further observed by Grava. The inscription in the Dome of Rock, which it is now, are considered aesthetic but landscapes panels of the Grand Mosque of Damascus may symbolize a vision of paradise based on an Islamic concept. Clevano serves this view, the omnipresence of plants convey an idea of the Garden of Felicity, nourished by the Quranic description, work hard underlined notions of the divine through ornament expressed in the totality of form to unite and characterize all the visual arts of Islam. So this scholars Adalan Bakhtia went further, Arian overwhelmed by nature's amplitude tries to convey the same multiplicity in symbolic and abstract ways to pay tribute to the creator. In short, Islamic ornament embellishes the surface, expressing contemporary ideas of beauty and aesthetic concepts through forms, materials, and techniques. Some ornaments are designed for communicating symbolic connotations. Of this complexity, Helen Brand held Islam as not a mere concept on abstraction, but is a recognizable entity, even if the entity defies its definition. Now I'm talking about the calligraphy a little bit. Uh, these were the first words that God revealed to the Prophet Muhammad and underlined the central role of writing in Islamic culture. The Quran chapter 68 opens with the words, 
by the pen and what they write. And the pen was sketched as the first thing created by God to write down coming events. Man's every deed is recorded in the book of a recording for the final count on judgment day, Sura 69, 18, and 19. God has sent his divine message through writing. Writing has been known to free Islamic Arabs, especially in the trade, as using a fine script is a Muslim obligation. Two main styles uh, developed, which you can see here. The script was known as Kufi from the name of the city Kufa in Iran in the seventh century, and Naski, a word derived from signifying to copy, and its meaning was almost equivalent to Kushi. Kufi is a rectilinear and the angular form that features specific aesthetic intention and scope. It is customarily used in the Quran with the vertical strokes as its uh, character and the more geometric configuration than Naski. About the calligraphy and the historical background, I have written a uh, pre-paper draft and you can read it there. So here is the Quran in the uh, Kufi and Allah in the Kufi different style. And here, Shahada, I bear witness that there is no God but God, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the prophet of God. Here you can see the grave stone or pulpit and then carpet. So here you can, you can see in Hagia Sophia, first was church and then museum, now is mosque. You can see our calligraphy and the here Timurid Vivihanum. Here you can see also calligraphy different style. And then there's a kita in Umayyad, essentially Kortova, you can see Mihrat, also different Khalira. Uh, and then uh, uh, Minaret, al uh, some mosque in Isfahan, here calligraphy, uh, and then the right Minaret of Jam in Afghanistan, here to show, to proclaim Islam, but at the same time to beautify and then give a message. So now I'm jumping to the Indonesia, the arrival of Islam in Java. Java stretched on the southern Indonesian archipelago has a tropical climate, abundant rainfall and the fertile soil providing bountiful natural resources. The Hindu Buddhist culture had influenced Java until Islam became the dominant religion in the 16th century. Of Islam's arrival, two developments probably occurred in various areas at different times. First, indigenous Indonesians who came into contact with Islam converted of their own religion. Second, Muslim traders such as Arabs, Persians, Indians, and Chinese settled down, bringing their religion with them and the associated practices. It is more likely, most likely that Islam's primary influence was spread across archipelago via trade routes, and its principal introduction into Java was around 1450 from Gujarat in northern India, when you see Demak, the first mo mosque is on the same time. So here, uh, the, uh, as a literary social Islamic ornament in Java were hard to find interviews with the Indonesian scholars who held. Archaeologists such as Chandra Sashmita, Ambari, and Sudhiawati Related Islamic art and architecture were brought by traders and ulamas, religious teachers, not by cultural people around the 12th century. As the foreign missionaries did not possess skills in making Islamic ornaments, they focused on explaining the principles of the religion to local people. The poor execution of a calligraphy on the earlier crab stones is probably an example of the limited skills that transferred. This tradition spread further, and local genius created new motifs after modifying existing ones with an Islamic context. Therefore, the first syncretic ornaments were named the local Islamic or Malay Islamic ornaments. Arabesque and geometry were somehow absorbed into similar to Islamic motifs, while Islamic calligraphy kept its position. It was combined with the Malay language in Java, invented a local script Javi. According to architect Farani, around the 18th century, during Dutch colonization, Javanese Muslims were more able to make a journey to Mecca as a pilgrim and learn about Orthodox Islamic ornament. They brought them home and adapted them to local ornamentation and cultural context. It was the second syncretism. After Indonesia's independence in 1945, any Javanese Muslim could travel everywhere and learn pan-Islamic ornament, repeating the same process to invent the third syncretism. 
In so, each period had the Ichmalai Islamic ornament. The assimilation of Islamic ornaments into the local culture was caused by the flexibility and tolerance of Islam and Japanese people. I have further interviews you can read from the, my, uh, my uh, paper. So now I'm going to show you a few. Uh, uh, example, I work as a point this transitory period, 1498, and you can see this at the gate and the entrance and Allah and the gravestone. And we see that the here calligraphy has more symbolic because the transitory period and the more sacred concept is Islamic. However, next to the new work, the Mangmur Abang, I, uh, this you can see on the top is uh, a calligraphy, can be a uh, message. However, when this is intermingled with the florals and the colors, it can be a decoration. And in Hiratula, in the Dutch colonization time, is in Jakarta. And here's many Chinese people who are working with the batiks. And here, you can see on the roof, this Allah in the nails. And however, to the right, you can see Mustaka. This is a pre-Islam Hindu Buddhist, and then still, uh, uh, it's very interesting how Japanese Islam is syncretic in you know, three day time. And next, in the same mosque inside, uh, you can see this uh, uh, special local ornamentation with uh, all types of Islamic calligraphy, and it's Chinese. And here is a uh, Kampung number 1880, is a Palestine missionary made uh, this mosque a few days. And it is it's, uh, very much uh, uh, local people, it is very much uh, discussion. However, here you can see all types of uh, clumsy Islamic ornaments. And the uh, Sotomati in 1922, it was Dutch office, but now it's most. Here, all types of uh, Islamic ornaments, uh, uh, particularly calligraphy, in different types are on the world. And here, right, Bagan in 1933, this is the Bandu. In the entrance, we can say this is uh, uh, maybe message, but it can be more decorative. But although we have Alan and Muhammad, uh, uh, so that the particularly green color, where the green color is a vision of paradise in the Islamic color, so there can be also different meaning too. And uh, however, the same uh, in most inside prayer hall, you can see here is Alan Muhammad with the lotus. Here becomes a little bit uh, more symbolic because lotus in pre-Islamic as uh, the creation, so that Allah and Muhammad in this in the more sacred atmosphere. And then uh, al Ahjar in the Jakarta, uh, this is uh, contemporary, you can see all modern Orthodox Islamic because al Azhar it was inspired from the al Hazar University in Cairo. Here you can see green, and then you can see on the roof, same as Hagia Sophia, it is Muhammad Allah and the Muhammad, all this text. And uh, this uh, Sunda Kelapa, uh, this Jakarta entrance, you can see his vine scroll, you know, kind of uh, arabesque kind of scroll, plus uh, this uh, look like geometry, it can be also Kufic, uh, Kufic calligraphy, and uh, one feels the go to the vision of paradise. And inside the Sunda Club, same, you can see very stylized lotus on the column and over there, arch Islamic calligraphy. And then this uh, Al Ukba Balai Kota in Bandu on the roof is modern. You can see all also decorative uh, calligraphy. And finally, Pusta Java 2000 built. This you can see enormous big mirror of Mimbar. However, there's a stained glass, modern glass there, Allah. Uh, on the alive, but it can be, of course, we know this is symbolic, however, also using as a decorative as well. So, finally, uh, scroll, this calligraphy was uh, appeared in the medieval time, 11th century, Romanesque, uh, Colossal Massa in France. Here you can see on the top, this is a uh, uh, Kupik, however, pseudo Kupik, and at that time also a crusade, so there's some historical meaning, uh, meaning behind it. So I'm just talking with the last, uh, 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 last conclusion, uh, conclusion. Islamic ornament is designed to provide a visual place to Muslim eyes and to represent the class existing in their minds. Its character is abstract and geometrical. From a Malay perspective, ornament provides delight and purity. The difference is the level of religious values inherent in the artifacts. 
Despite the regulation in the Hadith, the saints of Muhammad, Islam allowed artistic freedom because Oramant could encourage artists to adjust the integration of Islam into the existing culture. Japanese Islamic ornament became a continuation of the indigenous one, except the new import of calligraphy. Accordingly, it tends to achieve two functions, symbolic to Islam and aesthetic Islam. Calligraphy has accompanied the whole history of Islam in its way. Java is no exception. Islamic calligraphy has contributed to the Javanese religious architecture to keep Javanese Muslim identity, while it has gratified the Javanese Muslims' eyes through its beauty. It reminds me my research in Kuwait, what they say, the homage to God every moment in my life, keeping identity. I love calligraphy. Calligraphy is a unique art of Islam. A calligraphy is a trademark for Muslim. Islamic calligraphy is a, in Kuwait became one of the Kuwait elements. It is the same as in Indonesia. Thank you.